Let us come together with hearts open and ready, knowing that our God has gone before us to prepare every step of our journey. And this is In The Moment. I'm your host, Reverend Ricky Allen Jr. Thanking you as always for joining us on this lovely day the Lord has made. And of course, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I just prayed as always that you've got the Lord Jesus Christ out front leading you day by day. Uh, you may think that things in this world is just getting crazier. You might see lawlessness. You might see things that aren't just, but just know on your path, like everybody's path, Jesus Christ has designed a way for you to walk, for you to talk, and for you to live in a world that has lost its way for his glory and to your benefit. So let's get started. Our morning scripture reading comes from John 14, 2. John 14, 2 reads as follows. In my father's house, there are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And you have to believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is preparing a place for you so that when it's all said and done and you're standing before the Lord himself, you will be ready and you will be there. And for those who need prayer right now, maybe you are shaky in your faith in regards to understanding the preparation God has made for you. Well, we're here to pray for you as always. Uh, go to get-prayer.com. I'll, I'll get it out. Gettackprayer.com, where you can submit your prayer request. Uh, we do prayer journal ideas and all sorts of things related to prayer, especially now more than ever. So uh, get there, get prayer, and get some faith. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we come into your presence with the thankfulness for your constant preparation and guidance in our lives. We thank you for the many ways you provide for us, both seen and unseen. And as we focus on you right now, help us to trust in your plan and timing. So many times, this is where the mistakes are made even when the path ahead seems uncertain, help us to trust in your plan and your timing. Fill us with your peace and assurance, knowing that you have prepared a place for each of us and that your love goes before us in all things. Equip us with the strength and wisdom to follow your lead. And may our hearts be ever ready to respond to your call. Lord, in a world that it just seems like things are getting just more wild and more wild and we're, we're throwing our hands up, I just pray that for everybody that is frustrated, for everybody that is uh, dismayed, I pray that when you do respond, if you're not already, that they trust in the response. Because all the dismay and the upsetness and all these things that get us all riled up will mean nothing if we don't trust you. So why get upset and why pray if we don't trust you? Lord, help us be better than that. Help us do better than that so that your name gets the glory and the praise. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All right, so today we're talking about the God who prepares for you. We've talked about the God who fights for you, the God who provides for you. Now let's talk about the God who prepares for you. Many of you don't realize that even as you sit and you're listening or watching on whatever platform you're on, God is preparing something for you right now. And that's what we're going to discuss today. And we're coming from Psalm 23, 5 through 6. Psalm 23, 5 through 6 reads as follows. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us pray. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless the reading of your already blessed word. Help us understand 
uh, more in depth the, the last portion of Psalm 23. Uh, we've read this Psalm time and time again, and there are so many things we can grasp from it each time. And in this time, Father, help us be educated uh, with your word, through your word, so that we may go uh, do a word. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. We are fin finishing up Psalm 23. Uh, we will definitely try to get last week's message uploaded for you. I do apologize for not being on for that. Um, we were out of town celebrating my 23rd wedding anniversary, and we just want to, you know, just thank God for 23 years of marriage. Uh, it's a journey without a doubt. <laughs> I met my wife in Spain so many years ago, and we never looked back. We Once we realized where we were with our word, and once we realized where we were in life and the goals, we just realized that we could not go any further without one another and I pray that some I pray for that for someone out there that may be discouraged and maybe thinking marriage doesn't work or maybe you've gone through through marriages I want you to be encouraged in knowing marriage still works but you got to do it through the Lord Jesus Christ all right now we've talked about the God that fights for you we've talked about the God that provides for you and today we're going to wrap up with the understanding the God that prepares for you God prepared for you for me, for all of humanity, a way. That way is Jesus Christ. From Jesus, we are given access to heaven through him and him alone. The G then Jesus takes on the role of preparing us for the way through him. John 14, 1 through 4, as we just read earlier, uh, we're going to read a little bit more, though. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house have many, has many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. And that way is through the admission that we are sinners that need a savior and that only way the only way to be free from the grips of sin in our lives is through a relationship with jesus christ repenting of sin coming into the new you from the old you so when we look at psalm 23 which i told you before was not just a psalm of comfort but a psalm of provision we learned the God that provides for you knows your needs and takes care of them. He's a God that provides renewal. What is renewal? It's an official increase in the period of time for which it remains valid, which means when you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, your soul has been given an infinite increase in the period of time for which it remains valid, and in God's kingdom, that means forever. He's a God that provides restoration. Who needs restoration here as you're listening or watching me right now? Do you, restoration is the act of returning something to its former condition, making something new again. Who needs to be new again right now out there? Who understands that you have gone so far off the beaten path, you don't look like what God made you because you, you made a choice and the choice didn't work out. But do you know today that you can be restored? That you can, you can, God can bring you back. If you just turn back to the Lord Jesus Christ right now, you can be brought back. And he's a God that provides reassurance. Our God's a loving God, and through his word, he speaks to us, making us less afraid, upset, or doubtful of what lies ahead. If you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will understand exactly what I'm talking about. Regardless of what's going on around you, regardless of how they're acting out there, you will be reassured that the Lord Jesus Christ has a plan for your life. You will be reassured that when you bring the family to the cross, there is a plan for every individual in your family, and then there's a plan for your family as a unit. So you get double portion, double covering. Because everybody in the house has their own individual relationship with Jesus Christ, and you also have your relationship as a unit, all responding to the cross. 
and we are reassured because God has made a way and that way is Jesus Christ and because Jesus is the way we know the way and that gives us hope and a better tomorrow this week we see David change the angle of this psalm at the very end to giving us a small glimpse at God's attribute of preparation as we get to verse 5 and 6, we see how God prepares for us in contrast to a world that is, is, that is at odds with us. And it's so fitting that we enter a month where selective sinners are glorified, where society will punish a select few and protect others, where lawlessness is culture and faithfulness is tested daily. I'm here to tell you God has not only provided for you, but has prepared for such a time as this. So let's look at it. First, the God that prepares for you ensures your provision even in the presence of adversity. Scripture says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. God's preparations for you are mutually exclusive to you, but also inclusive to the visual viewpoint of your enemies. What God is doing here is making preparations for your needs in front of those who are considered your enemies. And the text says they are considered your enemies, which means they are God's enemies. And because God wants to be known by all, even your enemies, he's going to prepare a table with stuff and things on it of them to prompt even them to wonder, how is this person? getting through the adversity. How is he being provided for? Because God has already prepared for your moment where you're dealing with this. And the answer is because God is not going to hide what he's doing for you. Sometimes we think that if we get stuff from God, we need to cover it and hide it. That way no one messes us up you're 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 marginalizing God because God sees it too God heard it too God knows it coming for you but God's preparing for you though he wants to reveal himself through his preparation for you to them so that they may see how he's prepared a way out of no way and hopefully come to know him through his preparation for you and in the end God gets the glory and now you will get the benefit. And what happens is this. You will receive what has been prepared exclusively for you. Yes. And the inclusivity of the enemies of you will bear witness and prayerfully will also come to know him through witnessing this experience. What is this experience? God preparing to deliver you. The God that prepares for you anoints you with his favor and blessing. Scripture tells us, you anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. This favor is in the anointing or being chosen by God for blessing. How do we know? Well, we can look back at David's life from 1 Samuel 16, where um, verse 13, where it reads, when he is selected by God, the scripture says, so Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day, the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Samuel then went on the Ramah. So God selects him to be the next king through the anointing of oil. And we see God's anointing is one of preparing him for kingship because the next anointings is to assume said kingship. Uh, 2 Samuel 2, 4. Then the men of Judah came to Hebron and there they anointed David king over the tribe of Judah. Let's go one more. 2 Samuel 5, 3. When all the elders of Israel had come to King David at Hebron, the king made a covenant with them in Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel. So God's anointing prepares the believer to receive the blessing because the blessing is going to overflow, and when something overflows, it goes over the brim of where it's being poured into because there's just so much. Can you imagine where God is blessing you just so much to where you can't, you can't keep control of it all? Why? So there's a, there's a special anointing you get to maintain what God is giving you here. This is not a motivational speech, people. This is faith in action. Can you imagine the overflow? That if you just believed enough, the size of a mustard seed, 
you could receive that overflow if you just take in what the Lord's doing for you right now. Psalm 23 is about surrender, submission, sanctification, and being blessed. It's not, it's not, there's nothing for you to do. We feel like sometimes that we got to do everything. That's not the case here. The, what God is showing David in the psalm as he writes it is he is the one preparing the way. He's the one providing the way. He's the one providing the, the methodologies for you to defend yourself. There's nothing for you to think about or be submissive and follow the Lord. That's what it comes down to. And in the world where submissiveness has been degraded because the world wants everybody to be their own little gods, lowercase g, they don't get this. They'll, they'll never get this. It will remain a mystery. Be the example. The God that prepares for you guarantees his goodness and love throughout your life. The scripture tells us that surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. Notice that word, surely. Here's a believer that just knows that God's goodness and God's love is going to be intertwined in his life. And in that confident declaration, he describes two attributes of God that will always be with him. The goodness of God and the love of God. When you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, your faith in him and desire to know him at the relationship level, you are entering via faith into an ability to see the goodness of God in your life so that you can relate the things of God to this world through what Jesus is doing. We call that a testimony. And because you can see it now, experience it, you're able to testify not just to the goodness of God through the different things he's doing for you in your life and the different blessings you're receiving but to his love for you. And you can testify to that now. You, 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 you have his love inside of you. You can feel it almost. You can definitely feel it. Do, do you ever find yourself in a situation where even if the world despises you, even if everybody's talking about you like a dog, like they, like they do out there, this is what they do, because they're, they're a little shady. Um, but you feel, still feel loved. People out here who are looking for any alternative means of love, people out here who are looking for any other idea of how they can get love, do not understand the goodness of God and the love of God because they do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. That is where you begin in your conversations and the debates about what love is. Those who testify to what they define as God's love, but do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, falsely bear witness to the goodness of God and the love of God because they have no connection to his love unless they come into repentance, surrender, submission, and acceptance of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior over their life. So whatever they call love is not kingdom love, but it's of this earth. It's general purpose love. It's love designed to get you through this world, but does not give you access to the next. It's like going to the grocery store and choosing to get crisp rice instead of Rice Krispies. It's gonna look like it's the same, but I assure you, it's gonna taste different. Now, we've all done that tour. The God that prepares for you promises an eternal dwelling with him, and in the end, David writes it like this in his psalm. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, that's certainty. We saw the confidence and now we see the certainty of his fate when he leaves the earth. He knows he will be with the Lord. His hope, his security, his faith is all summed up in the words, and I will. Are you this certain today? Are you sure that you're going to be there? Are you this confident? You have to believe God is going to prepare a place for you to have this level of certainty. No God is preparing a place for you where you engage in his provision and know that it's all done for the glory of God and to your benefit. Maybe you're out there right now and you don't know about a God that fights for you. 
Because you've been fighting by yourself all this time. You've been fighting against a broken heart, disappointments of all sorts. People have let you down. The world has let you down. Yet you still, you still keep giving them a chance. I don't, I don't know what's going on with that, but I digress. And you need to understand who Jesus is. How is it you can trust your car? You can trust the fast food workers with your food. You can trust teachers at school with your children. You can trust the boss to pay you on time. But yet when it comes to you understanding your eternal preparation given by God, you need all this proof. You need all of this ex this sales call of salvation. It's ridiculous. You need to stop. What are you doing? What, why? Have you ever thought about that? You don't need proof on nothing else. If, if the car, if you went to the car dealership and he let you test drive it for 30 minutes for a price sticker sale of maybe a couple of thousand dollars, but you want the car, you're going to take it. Why? Because you want it. If the boss tells you that he's going to pay you $45 an hour for the job and you accept it, you're going to trust that boss to pay you on payday. When you drop your kids off at school, you're going to trust that teacher that he or she is going to do what is necessary to educate your children. And you don't see them nearly half the day. They're with other people, with other adults, your child. And you trust that. But for whatever reason, Satan has blinded you into this weird belief system that, oh, they, they got to provide proof and they, they, you don't, don't trust in that. Don't you trust in that there, that, 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 you, you know, that's that, I don't know about that. Well, you know, they're, they're hypocrites, you know, the, uh, they've got problems of their own. They think they're so perfect. You're being lied to daily. You're being misguided daily. You are being deceived daily. Just look at the news. Look at what's going on in the schools. Look at what's, go look at what's going on in these workplaces. Look at what's going on out here in this thing called life. Some place you can't even walk into the park without getting shot at. And they don't even know you. But yet, when it comes to you taking that first step of faith into understanding who Jesus Christ is and what he's done for you, you need all this discussion, all this explanation. Uh, I get it. If you're on the path, then yes, that's the way to go. To understand who Christ is, what he's done for you, and what a relationship with Jesus looks like. Yes, I want that to occur. But if you're sitting there with your arms folded, sitting there, you know, like this, you're sitting there with your arms folded, and you want to be convinced. You don't do that with nobody else in your life. Have you thought about that? I would suggest you think about it. Because the God that prepares for you has already prepared for your way. And that is through Jesus Christ. To understand how to get there, you gotta know where to get started. And that is through Jesus Christ. Not through your good deeds, not through being a good person. A lot of good people will go to hell. A lot of good people who are sinning who are being loved on by Christians will go to hell. We will love them right to hell because we are not presenting the gospel as it's supposed to be presented. The good news is the Lord Jesus Christ went to the cross and died for your sins. While you were still a sinner, by the way, he still died for you. He still died for me and rose again with all power in his hand. That if we could only believe in him, if we just believe in him, we will not perish but have everlasting life. That is the good, the good news high level. And you need to understand that if you're going to understand where we're going here. So, be sure to contact us via the information provided earlier in the show. Get-prayer.com. Get-prayer.com. Let us know what we can do for you to help you understand about the God that fights for you, that provides for you, and prepares for you. May God bless you, and may heaven smile upon you. You take care.